Bradley. We are backstage in Salmay, Sydney with Bill from him. How are you today, Bill? Um, getting there. Slowly but surely. Yeah. Slowly but surely. Yeah, it's a, it's a long way uh, to get to Australia from Helsinki and uh, still haven't slept for that. Yeah, yeah. I'll get there. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. getting into yeah, a few sure. shows in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of find the vibe. Yeah, and I don't need the makeup any, anymore to look like a goth, you know? So yeah, yeah. It's a bonus. <laughs> Did you share much of a history with many of the other bands in the tour at all? Oh, I haven't had the time to really hang out yet. You yeah. know, the whole festival just started, but uh, we do, do know a couple of people. And on this particular festival, it's funny because uh, a lot of bands uh, share the same flights. Yeah. So there's always gazillion people. And, and then I didn't know the Living Colour flight yeah. as well. And you know, I grew up with that stuff. Yeah, and they, awesome, they sat man. just a couple of uh, seats down from us and playing. And I'm like, those guys look so familiar. And, oh, well, that's Doug Wimbish and yeah, yeah. stuff. You know, it, yeah, it was, it, it's funny. So we get to meet him. It was nice meeting uh, Will from uh, Alice in Chains as well. Yeah. Last time around I saw him was uh, at the uh, Tabernacle in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, wow. He came to see our gig like that was six, seven years ago. So it's, awesome. this particular festival is one of them that brings a lot of rock and rolls together. You know? That's been one of the cool things where sort of a lot of the bands kind of meeting their idols or bands that they really Indeed. connect with. Yeah. And it's rare. Yeah. You know, to have a festival, especially this one, because it's traveling, so you get the opportunity of actually meeting new people, meeting people you haven't seen in ages, and actually you can carry on the conversation the next day as well. Your music's pretty heartfelt and emotional, and you know, you kind of pretty show... Pretty heartfelt. Yeah. It's very heartfelt. It's very heartfelt. <laughs> I mean, you often kind of show the scars that maybe you've gained from a life of love and loss, and as you sort of move on with life and grow and develop, do you find your lyrics have sort of evolved and reflect your sort of current state of mind, or do you write sort of retrospectively? Well, I, I tend to be a sucker for tragedy, so there's always, there's always something uh, wistful and melancholy happening in yeah. life in general, but uh, it, it, it's a very Scandinavian thing as well. I don't know why it is, but uh, we do enjoy our music being very sad, yeah. and the, through the sadness it's like a cathartic thing. It seems to make us happier. Yeah. So, uh, so the REM, shiny, happy people type of music, that makes me really sad and really depressed. And, and uh, So it, it works in funny ways, you know, yeah. but as, as a lot of rock bands, and especially harder rock bands, they say music is cathartic, you know, through the aggression and through yeah. all that stuff, you get rid of some of the stuff that causes troubles in your everyday life. So, yeah. so cultivating works. sorrow almost as a way to kind of, you know, in a joyous way. Yeah, the flowers are very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Out, the really religious people thought you were satanic and the satanic people thought you were just sort of playing around so you didn't really know you belonged how do you feel about the sort of issue now 20 years later after some, you know the church has been oh well, it was a funny time to be around i remember yeah, yeah i was a huge fan of impel nazarene and at that time they were against all the church burning people and then the church, the church burning there was a, like a big like there was talk of this like satanic terrorism and the, and the black circle or whatnot which yeah. was more or less just who you know, so on. Yeah, so on. It's kind of funny. And then now, you know, within these past couple of years, I've been able to meet some of the people that were really influential in that church burning thingy. Not, not yeah. personally, you know, burning the churches, but yeah. uh, in that scene, like people from Emperor or whatever. And, yeah, yeah. and it's funny to understand that they were kids when they were like playing the music. They were 17 years old or whatever, creating the records that for some reason created this big aura of evil around the world and, yeah. and, and it still carries. Um, it's resonant, yeah. Yeah, it still resonates, you know. Um, I, I, again, I think that it's very cathartic and then the church one, I think, you know, uh, to me it feels a bit odd because, especially the ones in Norway, they hold a lot of, you know, cultural importance and yeah. then they're very different from the places and the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the rest of the churches in Europe, for example. But, uh, you know, I've been joking about it that maybe just, they just had extremely cold winters and had to, uh, you know, warm themselves up a bit. How incredible, like, the success of Dark Light in the States and stuff? Yeah. It's, it's crazy, but it's yeah. one of those things that you don't, you're always so busy while doing it that you don't have the time to really reflect upon, you know, what yeah. just happened, so. So uh, it was just one of those things we were on the tour bus and somebody tells us that it's sold gold in America and we're just, okay, what's next? Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. It takes a while to, to realize that. It's a big thing to think for, uh, you know, the Finnish rock, rock and roll. Yeah. And, uh, and they're cool to be a part of it. You know, what's, the, what's the world of Finnish rock and, yeah, how do you sort of fit? It's macabre and, and yeah. cold and yeah. depressed and, and very true to itself. It's not necessarily too goth, but you know, Finns are one of those that you know, if there's, let's say there's one band that's very successful, 
Um, in Finland, you never have 20 other bands trying to do exactly the same thing. Everybody wants to do their own thing. Make and their own characters. Yeah. yeah. yeah and that's, You're a very distinctive uh, that's band in that way. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it's we're, we're really pretty good yet. copying, yeah. And, and we do, we've always, we've never, like, um, we never try to claim that we have reinvented the wheel of rock and roll, yeah. you know. So uh, you know, we've, we've always been proud of to be the kind of like the, the torchbearers for for Sabbath and Typho and Paradise Lost and Anathema and a lot of those bands. So, yeah. so um, sort of weave them through we're, your own. Yeah, yeah, we're part part of that little cult. You know, yeah, it's always yeah. it's always good to have a cult. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you get into the headspace? Oh, by not thinking about it. You know, you don't. No, no. I, I think that it's that's the magic. Crime. What we talked talked yeah, about earlier yeah. on. It's just like all of a sudden you start. You're in a bath reading Baudelaire, and all of a sudden you start humming something. And you're like, well, is this a Van Halen song? No, it's not. It's actually something new. And then you have to record it down. And then you just get giddy, like a kid in a candy store. You know. Yeah. Well, I look forward to hearing what you guys. Think. Well, us too, you know. Yeah. We, can, we can't wait either. Exactly. Yeah. It could be, it could be terribly bad or that's terribly it. good, and that's the that's the cool thing about it. Yeah, yeah. roulette. Yeah. Music. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, musical Las Vegas.